anything you know about it you must be knowing something about it for sure people hormones chemical messengers secreted by endocrine glands yeah so so let's write here as you used the word chemical so chemical or hormonal control and integration <clears throat> right so you said chemicals uh, secreted by glands just which gland any idea endocrine endocrine glands okay great so what we have another term then you were talking about hormones now we have another term called endocrine glands so devangi said chemicals secreted by endocrine glands are called hormones but that's a definition based on from where they are produced something which is based on their function how can you define that what do hormones do basically that's the question <clears throat> the one so hormones are commonly known as chemical messengers okay so if you define that it's true that they are secreted from endocrine glands but uh like um, are they proteinaceous in nature what are they like are they new something nutritive if i if someone ingests hormone or takes hormone is it going to provide energy to the body like enzymes are proteins right are hormones also proteins what is the chemical nature that's what i'm asking any idea okay so hormones you can write down they are hormones are non nutritive so they they have no nutritive value they are not nutritious so they are not proteins lipids fat or uh, they are not uh, vitamins minerals so they are non nutritive chemicals basically yeah that acts as inter cellular messenger is that okay just give me one second thanks yeah so non nutritive chemicals that act as intercellular messengers and you can also add to it that they are produced from endocrine glands in trace amounts what do you mean by trace amounts p 
stable. We will deal with endocrine glands in some time. Currently, we are talking about just the hormones. So, things that you have to keep in mind all the time is they are non nutritive. Okay. They act as intercellular messengers, which means between two cells. They, they, they signal from one cell to another, one tissue to another, one organ to another. Produced from endocrine glands. These four things should be in your definition and are present in trace amounts. Trace amounts means very, very less, very, very less in quantity. Is that clear? Very less in quantity. And it makes sense because they just signal, they just tell something. They do not, uh, uh, they do not themselves execute the function most of the time. So to, to tell something, uh, suppose I have to give you a signal that uh, to to prevent you or to tell you to do something. Okay, so I can just try. To, suppose I want you to start running. Okay, so I can just in two words tell you start running. That's the signal. Now when you will start running, you are doing all the work. I'm not doing it. I'm just giving you a signal. So even in very less amount. Uh, even if I write it on a piece of paper, just two words, start running, send it to you. What happens after that is a very long, strenuous and energy consuming process. Correct? Yes? No? So that's why all hormones are secreted in very, very trace amounts. Because they just need to give the signal. Okay, now let's come to endocrine glands. So what are endocrine glands? Endocrine glands. There are three terms. What does endo means? What does crine means? What does gland means? Let me tell you about glands. Gland means that secrete something what does endo means and what does crine means so devangi says their secretions go directly into bloodstream how how does it go directly to the bloodstream You are correct, Devangi, but uh, how does it directly go to the bloodstream? And what are the other type of glands? Exocrine. So the only difference is the word endo and exo. Crine is there. So crine simply means okay. So the word crine means secretion. What is being secreted? Okay. <clears throat> gland means, so glands secrete. So the secretion is called crine. Okay. Endo means inside. Okay. In this case, it means inside the blood vessel. Make sense? That's how it goes directly into the blood. Does it make sense, Devangi? Yes, sir. Yeah. So an endocrine gland just secretes directly into the blood vessel. Okay. Oh, 
on the other hand uh, what does exocrine glands do so exocrine people let me we are not going to study about it here but still let's exocrine this is something not part of this chapter but tell me um sir yes my theory is that they secrete outside of the body they cannot secrete outside of the body no rawan outside of the body no, no. is just yeah but you're right you're, you're, you're like, correct they secrete outside of the body like for example like sweat gland yeah, you're right you're right sweat gland just happen to be at the out, outside on, on the on the epidermis you're correct um but the idea is that they secrete away from and the source of production like uh, where they are producing they secrete somewhere away okay salivary glands yes, for that matter salivary glands pancreatic uh, enzymes and and one thing you, you you so your answer is correct but it does not have to be all the time outside the body okay it can be exocrine glands are inside the body as well okay but what exocrine gland secrete their secretion is called hormone and what exocrine gland secrete their secretion is called mostly their secretion is called enzymes okay degrade something break down something do some activity etc so exo is outside the outside the source of synthesis and through what through ducts so they have ducts ducts is basically nothing but pipeline endocrine glands are ductless glands okay make sense everyone so you have to you don't have to focus on this part but but still just as a just to know this part is clear yes sir yep okay <clears throat> mm. now because it's human physiology let's quickly talk about human endocrine system Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. people i'm getting some lag Am I audible still for everyone? Yeah. 
I cannot hear you, people. Can can someone speak? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes, Devani, thank you so much. Okay, so.
Okay, hello. Am I audible, people? Yes, sir. Yeah, sorry. I think none of you were co-hosts, and I got logged off. I'm trying. I'm waiting from last five minutes in the in the lobby area. I could not come in. Okay. Anyways, so I'm so sorry for the for this loss of network issue. Okay, this is where we were, right? Human endocrine system, correct? I I hope you all can hear me clearly. And thank you for waiting. Okay, now tell me who, uh, what constitutes of a of of human endocrine system. So how many first first let's talk about the organs associated. So what organs make or organs associated with human endocrine system in humans? So a way to do this, how I do it, I go from top, like let's start with the top head region and we'll keep going down. So how many endocrine glands basically or uh, endocrine, uh, endocrine glands are there in human body? So let's start with the head. Do we have any endocrine glands in our head? My head simply, I mean, like in the head region. Yes, right. We have the first is called hypothalamus. You have heard of hypothalamus, people? Hypothalamus. Then where is hypothalamus situated? Sorry, situated in forebrain. Remember, in last chapter, I taught you about hypothalamus. Where about where was it? It was a part of the forebrain, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Second is anything just connected to hypothalamus is pituitary gland. Right? And this is present in again in brain, like it's not a part of the forebrain, but it's brain below the hypothalamus. Okay. Any any other endocrine gland in the in the head region? There is one more called pineal. Anyone knows what does pineal glands do? This is also present in, in brain only. Okay. And what does, so we'll, we'll talk about the functions later on. Any other gland present in the head region? So this are present in the head region. There are other other glands are actually exocrine, like salivary glands are present in the cheek region. They are exocrine, not endocrine. Now let's come to neck region. Can you think of any gland as we go down? <clears throat> yeah. 
people, come on, answer. Thyroid gland. Yes. We have both thyroid. Just give me one second. There's someone. Hello? Am I audible? Yes. You're right. Thyroid gland. And also, there's something called parathyroid gland. Okay, we'll read about both of both of these. Anything else as we go in the neck region? No, right? So, this is present in our neck region. As we go below the neck, starts the thorax. Okay. So, any gland which is present in the thorax region, people. So we have we have <clears throat> we have thymus gland, which is present in the thorax region. You know about thymus gland? Uh, you know about lymphocytes, people? It it plays an important role in our immune system, thymus. So there are two types of lymphocytes: B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Correct. So T lymphocytes are called T lymphocytes because they are they come from thymus gland. Okay, but um, since you don't know, then we'll study about it. So thymus gland is present in the thorax region. Thorax means the the chest region. Okay. Is it clear, everyone? Going yes, down, yeah, going down to the abdomen region. I hope we are not missing anything. Uh, please, if 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 I'm missing anything, please uh, let me know because that's why I'm leaving some space so that we can accommodate later on. So when we go to abdomen region, the first important gland is pancreas. Now. There is an important thing about pancreas, which I think you should write here only. It has also come in the NEET exams. So pancreas is a dual gland. Okay. It is um, both, it act, it, so some parts of pancreas, the same gland, but some parts act as endocrine gland and they secrete insulin and glucagon as hormones. The other major part act as a exocrine gland and secretes digestive enzymes, pancreatic juice. Correct? You must have uh, heard the names of pancreatic amylase and pancreatic enzymes, right? Which helps in digestion. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yeah. So just make a star here and write down pancreas is the dual gland. Okay, both endocrine and exocrine. Uh, but this is present in the abdomen region. Anything else in the abdomen? Yes. Uh, adrenal gland. So adrenal gland is called adrenal because it's at the top of the renal. Renal means kidneys. Just once, just, just give me a while.
Yeah. Hello. Am I audible? Yeah. So adrenal is called adrenal because there are two things. So renal is the word which is used for kidneys. So uh, anything like uh, renal surgery or renal um, renalitis is kidney infection. So the word renal is always used for kidneys. Adrenal is on the top of renal and exactly adrenal gland sits on the top of the kidneys like a cap. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it's called adrenal. We'll, we'll function. We'll, we'll study the function in some time. But yeah, so these two, you should know, I'm just telling you the anatomical information. So they are present in the um, abdominal region. Abdominal region means the abdomen part. And uh, also there are another uh, one pair of uh, endocrine gland which is different in males and females. So the eighth one, just right here, is the ovaries. Okay, it is present one pair, so two. And ninth is testis, again one pair. But ovaries is only present in females. And testis is only present in males. Okay. And ovary, the location is lower abdomen in female. And testes is outside the abdominal cavity. And it is situated in a bag-like structure called Scrotum. So this is the whole uh, human endocrine system. I hope I'm not missing any endocrine gland. No, that's why it's, it's always easy to remember it going from top to bottom, from head, neck, thorax, abdominal region. And two are a little different, male and female. Based. <clears throat> Okay, please write this and let me know when you're done.
डन एवरी वन आई गोट देवांगीज मैसेज दैट शी इज डन अदर्स जानिया रवान एंड फराज Okay, Jani and Rowan are done. Faraz, can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, I'm not sure if he can hear me because not responding. Okay, anyways, so um, we have to move forward. Now, what we have to do is, um, we'll just make. point wise like uh, so there are paragraphs given in your book about every uh, endocrine gland and what what hormones they secrete and what is the function so we exactly have to do the same for every gland there are few things that will be will follow this so i'll in class today i'll tell you how to make notes for a few glands and whatever glands are left i'll give that to you as a homework to just follow the same template and make the notes okay is that clear is that clear everyone yes sir yes so let's start with uh, hypothalamus it's a little complicated once hypothalamus and pituitary i'll do in the class so for every gland if we take hypothalamus the first thing that we need to know is the location so that this map which this kind of a note already helps you to know whether it's present in the head neck thorax abdomen or in the lower abdomen okay <clears throat> now in this for hypothalamus the location is <clears throat> it is present in the basal part of fore forebrain basal part of forebrain even if you remember just the forebrain that's okay okay second is what you have to know is hormones secreted hormones secreted so in this we will name the hormone and the function right away so this only secretes two type of hormones okay now there are many different compositions but the type is two because the function of hypothalamus is to overall function is to regulate pituitary gland okay this is the overall function what is the overall function let's write here so in the bracket i will write the overall function or main function so this regulates pituitary gland is it clear so now when we know the overall function we will also understand that it secretes two type of hormones one is called the releasing hormones okay and the function of a releasing hormone is to stimulate the secretion of pituitary hormones stimulate the secretion of pituitary hormones now whatever hormone pituitary releases for example let's say pituitary is releasing um growth hormone okay so hypothalamus will release growth hormone releasing hormone is it clear ghrh now that growth hormone releasing hormone will go and tell the pituitary to release growth hormone 
suppose pituitary is releasing gonadotropin hormone so hypothalamus will release gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh now this will go and tell the pituitary to release gonadotropins okay is it clear yes sir so it only basically overall it does two things secretes releasing hormone and secretes inhibiting hormones to keep the pituitary in control either it will tell pituitary to release things or to stop releasing th things so you can write examples here okay growth hormone releasing hormone gh rh growth hormone releasing hormone okay or second is gnrh this is gonadotropin releasing hormone so i'm writing rh okay releasing hormone you understood second thing it releases is inhibiting hormone okay releasing hormone and inhibiting hormone you can write down this this inhibits the secretion of pituitary hormone is it clear everyone yes sir so again whatever hormones pituitary secretes it will secrete a inhibiting hormone for that <clears throat> so for example one example is somatostatin somatostatin is a inhibiting hormone secreted from pitot uh, from hypothalamus which inhibits the secretion of growth hormone okay inhibits the secretion of growth hormone so somatostatin is also known as growth hormone inhibiting hormone gh ih make sense is it clear everyone yes sir so that's the overall function of um, hypothalamus it just um, regulates pituitary now pituitary is the master gland which we will come to the next but this is the regulator of the master gland okay now the question is how do these hormones reach the pituitary so first we have to study location hormone secreted and their functions because we can just do it simultaneously and third is if there is any mechanism of action or mechanism of uh, release Okay, that will cover the last thing. Is it clear? So this you have to do for all the glands. Just these three points you have to study for all the glands, and nothing else. 
questions come on this basis only <clears throat> now tell me anyone knows how how the hormones from the hypothalamus reaches the pituitary now if hypothalamus is the part of brain what kind of cells will be present there what cells are present in brain neurons correct in the last chapter we studied about neurons so hypothalamus is a part of brain so it will also have neurons does it make sense am i am i clear yes sir so the mechanism of action or release is that all these hormones whether they are releasing or inhibiting they are they are synthesized in the hypothalamic neurons right on first point <clears throat> these hormones are synthesized in the hypo thalamic neurons okay from the neurons they are secreted so you can continue and secreted from the neurons right just like neurotransmitters are secreted right did i tell you that some hormones also act as neurotransmitters because yes or no like epinephrine it's a hormone but it, it it also act as a neurotransmitter because neurotransmitters are also chemical messengers only so these ones are secreted from these neurons and how do they reach the the uh, pituitary because pituitary is just below the hypothalamus but pituitary has two lobes anterior lobe of pituitary and posterior lobe of pituitary now in the next part uh, on uh, next we are going to read about pituitary but here let me tell you that if the hormones which are released from hypothalamus has to go to the anterior lobe of the pituitary then it goes through a circulatory system through blood okay so you can make a divergence here from here uh, they can either go to anterior lobe of pituitary or they can go to posterior lobe of pituitary like there are different hormones which needs to go to anterior lobe and different that needs to go to posterior lobe now the one that goes to anterior lobe <clears throat> they are they reach through circulatory system is that clear and the one that has to go to posterior lobe <clears throat> they reach directly through neural network <clears throat> okay so the posterior pituitary is under direct control direct neural control of hypothalamus make a star here and this was a question in entrance write down the posterior lobe of pituitary is under direct control of hypothalamus 
थ्रू न्यूरल नेटवर्क इज अंडर डायरेक्ट कंट्रोल ऑफ पिट्यूटरी सॉरी हाइपोथैलमस थ्रू न्यूरल नेटवर्क ओके इज दैट क्लियर यस नाउ आई एम टेलिंग यू वन थिंग हेयर ओनली व्हिच नॉर्मली आई टेल इन द नेक्स्ट pituitary part but just know that anterior pituitary is also known as <clears throat> adenohypophysis okay adeno hypo Hypophysis. Hypophysis means under the hypothalamus, so hypophysis. And posterior pituitary is called neurohypophysis. Now you can understand why there is the word neuro in this. Correct? Because it is under the direct neural control. Make sense, everyone? Yes. No. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, next gland is the biggest, like it's most, the most complex one. So we'll cover that in today, and then along the same line, you have to just read. So others are just one small, small paragraphs, where you just have to focus on the three things. Location, hormones secreted, and their functions and mechanism of action. If there is given, if that is given about on the gland, the endocrine gland. Now the second gland that we will start is pituitary. and the most common important thing about pituitary is that it's called the master endocrine gland okay this is its common it controls all many you know many functions in the in the body now again what are the three things that we have to study tell me first thing is location tell me where is it located people <clears throat> hypothalamus below the hypothalamus okay so it is below hypothalamus it is actually attached to hypothalamus attached through a stalk in the brain okay stalk means just a attachment point and it is located it is very very so it's a master gland so it has to be protected well protected so it is located inside a bony cavity bony cavity means a cavity formed by bone okay and that bony cavity is known as cella torsica Is that 
Is that clear, people? So remember Sela Torsica. Sela Torsica has been asked. It is the bony cavity in which our pituitary gland is very, very safely located and protected. Okay. Now, second, what we have to, what is the second point? Hormone secreted. Hormones secreted and their function. So, Pituitary secretes a plethora of hormones. A lot of hormones is secreted. But before we go there, remember I told you that there are two lobes of pituitary, right? Neurohypophysis and adenohypophysis means anterior pituitary, sorry, posterior pituitary and anterior pituitary respectively. Correct? What did I say? It ulta. Adenohypophysis is anterior pituitary and neurohypophysis is posterior pituitary. Correct? So their hormones are also different. Okay? So first, we will talk about hormones secreted. No. By Posterior pituitary. And what was posterior? Or let's do first for anterior. Anterior is first. And what was anterior pituitary known as? Adeno or neuro? Yes. Okay. Okay, now <clears throat> it secretes first growth hormone. Now, this is quite straightforward. What does growth hormone, what can growth hormone do? Function. Tell me the function. What do you think growth hormone does? Simple, growth of the body, right? So write down growth hormone is responsible for growth of organs and tissues of the body. <coughs> and if there is a problem in this growth hormones secretion. So there can be two things. Either you make too much of growth hormone than required or too little than required. So if it is too much, then you can write over secretion of GH. Over secretion leads to gigantism. Giant people very big. You might have seen very big humans sometimes, right? They're not 
obese or fat they are just very big not just tall or broad both that's because of over secretion of growth hormone and under secretion leads to dwarfism or stunted growth under secretion leads to dwarfism or stunted growth okay and there is one thing associated with growth hormone that is asked so overall if you secrete it more the body becomes giant overall if you secrete it less the body becomes uh, stunted or short but sometimes there is a problem that when when humans are born it's okay the secretion is fine but in adults uh, especially in the middle ages like when they reach their 30s and 40s uh, the secretion becomes abnormal and starts so the growth hormone starts to to uh, uh, the growth hormone begins to be secreted in excess amount during the middle age so if it abruptly starts in the middle age then it leads to because now the body is kind of formed and set but of course if you have more growth hormone there will be some effect so what happens is many structures of the body starts getting disfigure starts getting disfiguring and the most prominent effect of that disease is seen on the face face starts to get disfigured like the disfigurement of face starts to happen and that's called acromegaly a c r o m e g a l y so you can write down acromegaly happens due to it is associated with growth hormone only but it's not like from the beginning you are producing is too too much it is it happens due to excess excess secretion of growth hormone in the middle ages of a human you know middle age means mid 40s or mid 30s of a human it leads to disfigurement of body structures especially the face disfigurement of body structures especially the face is that clear yes sir so acromegaly is different from gigantism correct now you understand how it is different from gigantism because this was one question in the in the cbsc that how is acromegaly different from gigantism so in both there is excess secretion of growth hormone but what is the difference can someone quickly tell me devangi acromegaly uh, excess secretion happens only in middle age yeah in the adults it starts in the adults great and the face is the most affected one affected structure other structures are also affected but uh, in gigantism the whole body in a very synchronized manner becomes big that does not happen anyways <clears throat> okay so is growth hormone clear yes sir yeah. second 
this anterior pituitary secretes a hormone called prolactin. It's known, it's written as PRL. Capital P, capital R, capital L, PRL. Prolactin. And as the word suggests, can you you can understand that what what will prolactin be doing? Lactation. It is associated with lactation. So prolactin. I don't. Regulates the growth of memory glands and milk formation in females. Okay. Development of memory glands and milk formation. In females. And when does milk formation takes place? After the childbirth. Correct? So after the childbirth, the level of prolactin in the body increases of a female. So lots and lots of prolactin is secreted from the brain. And now you can understand why. Correct? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. Third hormone that anterior pituitary secretes is called thyroid stimulating hormone. Or known as TSH. And it's very simple. As the name suggests, what it must be doing? It goes and stimulates the thyroid and tells the thyroid to start secreting thyroid hormones. Okay? That's why pituitary is known as the master gland. I hope it's making sense to you now. Is it making sense, people? Yes, sir. Great. So some hormones are obviously, the function is very obvious. Their name suggests the function. Then, and this is all from anterior pituitary. Then it secretes uh, another hormone. called <clears throat> ACTH okay adrenocorticotrophic hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone even if you don't remember the full name just remember A C T H Adrenocortico, adrenal gland. It goes and what does it do? It acts on adrenal gland. So write down. It stimulates the secretion of it. Stimulates the secretion of steroid hormones from adrenal cortex. Cortex of the adrenal gland. 
adrenal cortex and if you want to give an example for this steroid hormone you can write glucocorticoids we will study what this hormone does when we will come to adrenal gland but just know that pituitary regulates the adrenal gland okay <clears throat> and remember i told you about gonadotropins so next hormones that pituitary secretes is called gonadotropins okay now the word gonad means testes and ovary so gonadotropins are of two types one is lh and one is fsh both of these hormones are produced in both males and females okay but they do different functions in males and different functions in females because males have different gonads and females have different gonads okay we will talk about this function make a star here we will talk about <clears throat> this hormones function in the next class i will just quickly uh, finish this list first and next from the anterior pituitary what is secreted is um uh, msh msh is called melanocyte stimulating hormone this is last or uh, let me first write the full form melanocyte the word cyte in biology means cell melanocyte is the cells which secretes melanin okay so when melanin is secreted the signal comes from this pituitary you can write down melanocyte secreting hormone acts on the melanin producing cells regulates the melanin producing cells and controls the pigmentation of body is that clear yes sir yeah <clears throat> so i'm giving you a homework to do the same thing for posterior pituitary then uh, the other small uh, other um, glands like pineal gland thyroid gland parathyroid thymus so just read about it till the glands okay don't don't read about uh, the mechanism of hormone action that i will do in the next class in detail okay so this is where we stop for today's class uh, do you have any doubt people in the next class i expect you to come with your own notes and if you have any doubts in any of the hormone i will take that before we go into the mechanism like hormones are of two types one are steroidal hormones and non steroidal hormones so both of them function slightly differently inside the cell 
so that we will focus on okay